Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Adam and Chris Show. I'm St. Adam. And I'm Chris Malice. And today, we're here to talk to you about some underrated horror films. This isn't going to be like a top ten or a countdown or anything. This is a couple films that, you know, both of us feel should probably get some more attention. Especially with it being October and all. Um, I picked Ooh, two. spooky. And Chris did some other things before the show. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> yeah. Just, just keep claiming that. These films, we think they're good films. Just think people need to check them out a little more. And uh, we're going to get right into it. Okay. So the first film on my list, not list, but the first film I want to name, Bad Moon. Bad Moon, if you're not familiar with it, it's a werewolf film. came out in 1980, no, I'm sorry, 1996 by Warner Brother Films. stars Michael Perry, who some people might know from the film Eddie and the Cruisers. Anyone that had watched it, it, it was kind of a, a hit. Never, yeah, it spawned a hit radio single. Also has Merle Hemingway in it. We all know who she is. And Mason Gamble, who played Dennis the Menace back in, what, 93, 94? Mm. Um, so basically, the idea of this film is this guy, played by Michael Perry, gets bitten by a werewolf in Tibet and struggles with, you know, becoming a werewolf every night. Not just on a full moon, just every night he just changes and has no control over his actions. He's tried every medical cure he can think of. Nothing's working. So he thinks maybe, maybe it might be more of an emotional state of mind, not like you know, being werewolf yeah. is a feeling or anything, but, you know, maybe if he can get his mind right, maybe he can control this. And if he can't, maybe he can make peace with it. And I, it almost seems like he's thinking about suicide at one part in mm -hmm. the film. So he packs up his trailer and he goes and he crashes with his sister. Um, you know, she's a single mother who has a son. I think he's probably about, a, he looks like he's about 10 or 11 in this film. Anyway... <laughs> They have a dog, a German Shepherd named Thor. Because see, this film is actually based on a book written by Michael, or I'm sorry, Wayne Smith, called Thor. And in the book, it's told through the eyes of the dog. And I've been trying to track down a copy of this book. It's hard to find, at least in any price range I can afford. Really? Yeah. Like try looking up on Amazon. I'm not finding anything below like seventy bucks. The last time I checked. That's yeah, still wow. Yeah. Um, and the, the film's kind of told through the dog's eyes. You see the dog, you know, you follow him around, I guess. He's, he is the protagonist. He's very protective of his pack, as they call it in the book. And he can sense there's something wrong with the uncle. This character that I guess he's known before, but now just knows something's wrong, doesn't recognize him, doesn't like the way he smells and stuff. So every night the uncle transforms into a werewolf. Now he tries to go out into the woods and cuff himself to a tree, you know, and just spend the night chained to this tree as the savage werewolf. The dog gets out, and he actually sees him and barks at him. There's a couple times where Meryl Hemingway actually starts making her way out to the woods before the dog gets her back to the house. Um, it actually builds up into a climax where, um, through a series of events, the dog is put in um, animal control shelter, and the kid breaks him out. Um, Meryl Hemingway's character actually finds that something's not right with her brother. He's been lying to her, and she tracks him down in the woods, and he just changes in front of her. He gives in to the beast and tries to kill her. This The, the actual werewolf part is played by Freddy vs. Jason. Jason. Oh, Ken really? Singer. Yeah, wow. which explains the size of this thing. It's got one of the best werewolf looks I've ever seen in a film. Practical effects. You know, the only CGI in this film is actually the transformation scene, which is the only scene that doesn't work in this film. They they have his body shifting around. Like, you see, like, this, like, red spot, like, heat up in his chest. <laughs> and then it's just, it's so weird. Ooh. You know, there's, like, several stages before he actually changes. But if you can get through that scene, this is pretty fun to watch. Um, they actually had three dogs to play Thor in it. Really? Yeah, um... And the, the part where the werewolf and the dog fight, yeah. the other two dogs that were bigger, they were afraid of the werewolf costume. Yeah. Like, they just kind of wouldn't do what well, they were supposed to. So yeah. they brought in a smaller female Ooh. that was a police attack dog. So they brought and in a it, bitch. 
Yeah. They had her on the leash. I was watching this behind-the-scenes footage, and when they said action and let her go, she ran up and jumped on him so hard, that scene where the werewolf falls back on that shelf, mm. that wasn't supposed to happen. She just hit him with that force. Wow. Yeah, so it's pretty cool. It's got a great look to it. It is suspenseful, and again, it's unique because it's told through the eyes of this dog. So that is one of my picks for underrated horror film that I think you should check out, Bad Moon. My pick is a weird, bizarre, really far off movie directed by Kevin Smith called Tusk. It stars uh, Justin Long and Michael Perks. Michael Parks. Uh, I don't know. It says Perks on your nose because that's not uh, a name. <laughs> but it's directed by legendary comedy director Kevin Smith, who right before this directed a movie called Red State. I haven't seen it. Red State was good. I have seen it. He's seen it. Um, I'm surprised he hasn't. Uh, this is kind of like Kevin Smith's, uh, you know, foreway into starting to make uh, more horror films. Well, Red State was. I wouldn't this. call this a horror. Film. It's weird. It's Look, weird. it will it's make you uncomfortable. Weird. It'll make you absolutely uncomfortable. Both our wives hated it. The, yeah, like, my wife's like, I, I never want to watch this again. It just weirded her out too much. That, that is one of the first rules of horror movies: is it's got to make someone uncomfortable. Um, so the story is about a uh, podcaster or uh, name played by Justin Long, who's kind of a douchebag, like a who, certain YouTuber. No, I'm, I'm not a douchebag. I'm cool. <laughs> <clears throat> but uh, <clears throat> he uh, decides to go into Canada because he heard rumor about a, a story about a uh, kid that was uh, playing with some sort of lightsaber while dancing or some weapon and accidentally cut his legs off, and he was going to do a a whole video on him. Um, I think it's Haley Joe Osmond who played the kid. Ooh. No, Haley Joe Osmond plays his uh, co-host. Oh, his co-host. I, I kind of forget who he is sometimes when he's in something. Unless it's the boys and getting brutally killed by Butcher. But I digress. You do. <laughs> but uh, um, he goes to Canada uh, to meet this kid. It turns out he killed himself because people made fun of him online. Go figure. Oh, that never happens. <laughs> but, I'm uh, just saying with, with... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so he looks up this ad to basically have someone come visit him and it's this rich old guy who when he goes and visits him he discovers that this guy wants to turn him into a walrus well not right away though he 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 remember he's like oh you have the best stories and then he he's drinking he passes yeah, he out drugs him. he wakes up with his one of his legs cut off yeah 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 it's like, what happened? Oh, you got bit by a spider. What? <laughs> Michael Parks takes the hamminess to 11. He chews the scenery, and it works for it. He's fucking batty. He's wacky. His whole reasoning for wanting to turn this guy into a walrus is because when he was in the <laughs> Navy, <laughs> he, uh, he, uh, a boat he was on crashed in some sort of iceberg, and some walrus was taking care of him, and what not, and he, I nursing guess, nursing him back to health, nursing him back to health. Well, uh, he ends up <laughs> killing say that out loud. He, he kills the walrus and he feels bad for it constantly. And he wants a walrus to have a chance to fight him, I guess, and, and fight win. him as a walrus. As a walrus, it's not him versus a walrus, <laughs> it's him fighting a walrus while he, him, he, he himself is wearing a walrus suit. suit. So he physically. <laughs> takes parts off his body and all that. He deforms Justin Long to become a walrus. Cuts to have, his tongue out. Yeah. Because he like can't even communicate. He just has like this... Mm-hmm. Well, like kind of like this whale he does. Um, they have this little standoff uh, and, well, it kind of ends with him being a douchebag but stuck being a walrus. Uh, it's a weird, weird fucking film. I believe uh, Kevin Smith was uh, part of a podcast, and they were joking about the the Smodcast, and uh, they were joking about making this and writing, and people were throwing in ideas. How much pot did he smoke while he was writing this? Oh God, probably a lot. (laughs) Doesn't matter. Sometimes some of the best creativity comes from drugs. I I agree, but I'm like, it is weird. Like the ending, I do feel is sad. Like where he, because like he is Justin Long's so broken down, like. Humanity's gone. He is a walrus at this point. Yeah. So, like, the ending is kind of depressing. Yeah. His uh, co-host, Haley Joel Osment, and uh, his girlfriend, 
uh, visit him, and he's in like this like pseudo and trap like like zoo like thing. It, being it's weird. I'm like. A human it's walrus. In Canada, I'm like, they have better health care than we do. Why didn't they get him some help? Probably because he's an American from Can- coming to Canada. I don't know. I don't know the statistics of that stuff there, but I just know <laughs> he's now a walrus, and it's uh, it's pretty fucking weird. What is the quote from that line? There's a quote. Oh, I'm sorry, quote from that movie. There, there's a quote from the movie where uh, Michael Parks is hamming it up to eleven, and he says. He's like he he says to him as they about to they about to duke it out as walruses. Uh, it's time to answer the age old question: Is man really a walrus? Now, I haven't read a lot of history books, but I've never ever come across anyone, even famous, pseudo famous, anywhere that has pondered that idea. Never have. It's actually in the Bible, Chris. Okay, somewhere in the back, I'm sure. Oh, it's got to be all <laughs> way in the back. <laughs> So yeah. that's that's my tusk. first pick. Okay, so the next one I picked it was more of a found footage type film. It's called Megan is Missing. Some of you might know it. I know a lot of people when I talk about this film haven't heard of it. It was released by Anchor Bay Films back in 2011. And I remember watching, I found this on Netflix. And it's one of these found footage films about this popular uh, teenage girl that just goes missing. She starts. She's talking to this boy online. And it's like kind of shown in real time through like video chats or um you know like phone footage stuff or even news reports and she's talking to this boy she goes to meet him online she's and then she comes up missing so the rest of the film focuses on her best friend um amy trying to find out what happened to her. i know yeah the cops are too but the cops are kind of like oh she met a guy and ran off like they're kind of writing it off as like mm. you know teenagers do the darndest things and she's like no this this isn't how megan yeah, yeah, and she starts looking into it. And she can't find a record of this boy that Megan went to go meet or anything. And it, it, I, I think that like it struck a chord with me because you know you see like all these posts about kids going missing, and then you you hear all these horrible stories and like it could easily happen. I know like before this like a movie that touched upon it when we were in high school, Strange Land. Yeah, I mean, but this was taken. This was taken to a more realistic level than that was. Although that is a good film, and I recommend it. It'd be number three if I had a third one on here. Um, but yeah, Rachel Quinn plays Megan, and she does it very well for like the, the few scenes you actually get to see of her. The rest of the movie is carried by Amber Perkins, who plays Amy, and it's really. It's depressing at times, you know, especially the ending. The ending, I'm just like, yeah, this could happen right here. Um, I know, like, through one of the scenes, and this is messed up, so, like, nobody can find Megan. They assume, oh, she's just, you know, with some boy, she'll be back. This picture of Megan turns up on a porno site. Ooh. Um, in, like, some really brutal bondage gear, like, strapped to a table and shit, like, Almost, like borderline torture porn borderline uh eight millimeter like something like or from that something, movie or something like you know out of hostel or something like Ooh. that and, eight millimeter good hostel and, and they're like you know and she's like this is megan this is totally megan and megan would not pose for photos like this and she's almost kind of like yeah that got the cops riled up but she's almost falling on deaf ears about this mm-hmm. And so she's, like, trying to trace the tracks and everything and going out by herself. And so it is kind of powerful, especially, like, if you know people who are really sensitive to things that could happen. Like, the the girl I was dating at the time, I was like, you probably do not want to watch this. Because, like, she got things got to her so easily. I'm like, I don't think you can make it through this. It is, like, if you look at it as, like, almost a documentary almost, I'm like, this can be kind of intense. So yeah, Megan is missing is another one I recommend you check out. My movie, I'm gonna, my last movie to recommend that you check out is a movie called Martyrs. It is <laughs> extremely fucked up. It's extremely uncomfortable, but I love it. Uh, Obviously, the only notes he wrote about it said Martyrs, extremely fucked up film. <laughs> So, what the movie is about is it starts off with a young girl who's in captivity. She finds a way to break out and she runs off and looks like she's been in captivity for a while. Well, after she escapes, she goes to she's goes to like an orphanage to eventually be adopted or a foster care center. She befriends another young woman 
and you see in the title credits that they become close friends. There is, before I continue on, an American version of this movie that everyone <laughs> should steer the fuck away from. It's terrible. It's boring. It's banal. It's fucking terrible. <laughs> but back to the good stuff. And apparently repetitive, because that's two terribles. Oh, it's horrible. Uh, okay, two terribles and a horrible. But uh, so these two girls develop this bond. So the next scene we see is this normal, um, I believe it's a French film, um, family sitting and eating breakfast. And there's a knock at the door, and it's one of those girls, and she guns the whole fucking family down, puts them all down in the ground. Now, she has some sort of trauma that she's dealing with. So she, from being kidnapped, it's the young girl, she calls her best friend and she shows up. And for a good portion of the movie, you start thinking that this shit's all in this woman's head. That she's got PTSD, she's seeing these things. They, they come across this woman that's been mutilated and all that type of stuff. Um, I'm not going to give away too many crazy, crazy details. But uh, the ending is... Um, very interesting. After I got done watching this horror movie, I was with a friend of mine. And you typically, you watch one of these really uncomfortable films. You just sit there and talk about how fucked up it is. Uh, at one point, what happens is that family was connected to a group that kidnaps people and tortures them to try to find out if there's life after death and all that type of stuff. That organization comes in. And starts to fuck with the other girl. Um, I highly recommend it. I'm not going to do a whole say a whole lot more on it. Everyone should check it out. So there you go. Some underrated horror movies for the month of October that we feel are worth checking out. Real quick, what's an overrated horror movie that you feel people should steer clear of? American Werewolf in Paris? I said overrated. <laughs> That's so underwhelming you can't count it. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. It's, it's just not about good. The Resident Evil films. Whoo! <laughs> whoa, whoa! All yep. of them are stinkers. Yep. Yeah, there's no, nothing redeeming. About those. <laughs> those sure, are turds. I'm sure that'll be another video at another time, but uh. there you have it. So, from the Adam and Chris show, do you have anything you want to recommend to them out there, uh, aside from the American version of Martyrs? Yeah, don't touch... Uh. <laughs> See The Vanishing, both American and the uh, foreign version are both pretty good. All right. Well, if you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe. Ring the little bell to let you know when we put out more. Okay. You act like you're going to say something. No, I won't. Okay. <laughs> if, we, if you have any underrated horror films that you feel are worth checking out, please let us know in the comments section below. Please follow us on all our social media sites, and we will see you later. Have a good one.